Hello everyone, my name is Anush Khanna and I am a Cognitive Aptitude Trainer in Time Education, Pune Center. When we are talking about the CAD examination and especially when we are talking about the third section that is Cognitive Aptitude, let us talk about few facts and figure. As you can see, we have written two facts and figure here. Whenever we are talking about this particular examination, our target is good college and to get a good college, we must clear the cutoff. Cutoff is always considered in the terms of percentile. 90 above percentile will be considered to be a very good percentile in any examination. And in order to get above 90 percentile in CAT examination, if you are looking at CAT 2016 and CAT 2017, all you require in quantitative aptitude was 32 marks and 45 marks. That means 11 correct question and 15 correct question in the respective examinations. So now the question is, is quantitative aptitude a very difficult thing because many non-engineers do consider this to be a difficult subject and they are afraid of mathematics and they don't understand how to solve the question and they always keep asking us how exactly they need to go about this particular question. So we need to keep few things in mind when we are preparing for quantitative aptitude examination. Especially for the CAD examination that will be happening on 25th November 2018, the very first thing that you should keep in your mind that this will be after VARC and DILR section. That means we have already spent two hours in the examination and after two hours now we are looking at quantitative aptitude. That means we are already tired, maybe frustrated after looking at the questions, we are not very happy with the performance in the past uh, two sections. Whatever may be the reason, please do not lose hope, your concentration and do not let the other two sections be a reason for the third section. Let's try to gain the maximum out of the CAT examination by scoring equally well in all the sections. I hope before you watch this video, you have already watched two of our videos given by the director sirs about the VARC and DILR, how to clear the cutoff, how to go about the questions, how to look at those two sections. Once you are done with these two sections, then you will be entering the third one that is quantitative aptitude. What the quantitative aptitude is all about? It's about playing with the numbers. It's about understanding the core concepts. It's about knowing the formulae for that exact question. It's about application of the formulae. It's about looking at the solutions from the options. It's about giving a trick so that you can reduce a 10 step question into just a 2 step question. In assuming some of the data, in analyzing that particular data and applying your mathematical skills to get the betterment of that question. Now many people in the past were afraid can we do well in this particular section if we don't know the concept? The answer to that question is very simple. Without concept, you cannot clear any of the section. So when we are talking about quantitative aptitude, the very first thing is concepts and formulae should be very clear to you along with the application of those formulae. Whenever you are learning any formula, being it arithmetic formula or especially geometry formulae or algebra formulae, you need to keep in mind that along with that formulae you should solve 5 to 10 question based on that formulae so that you should know how to apply that formula in a better perspective and once you are solving 10 question on one formula then you will be able to understand how to apply that formula and you will remember that formula because people have a tendency of forgetting the formulae after 15 or 20 days of study. So one of the key factor is you revise formulae after every 15 to 20 days, make a separate copy for a formula, a separate copy for the application of the formula, so that after every 15 to 20 days, before writing any mock test, you look at the formula book and every formula you should remember before writing the examination. Now how to go about the quantitative aptitude section? So we will divide this section in four different parts. The very first part of quantitative aptitude section is arithmetic. 
we are looking at percentages, we are looking at profit and loss, we are looking at simple and compound interest, time is spent distance, time and work, average, allegation. How to gain the maximum out of this particular section? There are three keys for that. Key number one, you should know the basics. Key number two, you should know the assumptions. Key number three, you should work from the options. Now many people ask, if the options are not there, what are we supposed to be doing? Looking at the past three years of the exam, especially the CAD examination, we have learned one thing. Out of 34 questions of quantitative aptitude, there are hardly 7 to 10 questions which were not having options. That means remaining 24 to 27 questions were with the options. And whenever the options are present, you should utilize them to the maximum level. In arithmetic, you must know how to utilize the option for your benefit because they are friends in the examination. Secondly, you must know the basics, you must know the assumptions and you should try to solve every question of arithmetic in two to three different ways because in arithmetic only there will be more than one way of solving any question. So that is the very first thing. If you are facing any kind of difficulty, uh, if you are facing any kind of difficulty, please contact your faculty members. See how they are approaching the question. They have already trained you in many classes. You have learned few of the techniques from them. Try to apply them. Do not try to learn new techniques in the last one month of the examination. Try to apply whatever you have learned so far. Now, if we are talking about the second section, which is numbers. In the past five to six years, we have not seen many questions of numbers which are coming in the examination, especially the CAD examiner exam. But you should still learn this topic because we don't know CAD is unpredictable in the future. If they might give you some question of numbers, it will be beneficial to go through all the basics of numbers. Here, you must understand the reason why exactly the numbers are kept like that. You must understand how the numbers are kept in that question. You must understand how to play with the numbers. You must understand why the numbers are designed in that particular way. Every single thing connected to numbers is all about your basics. The third section geometry heavily depends upon the theorems and formulae. You must know each and every theorem like uh, you must know each and every theorem, you must remember them and you must know the application of each and every theorem for this examination. The best way to do that is separate all the geometry question in each and every mock examination, write down a list of formulae that you can apply on them and see which formula you were unable to recall at that particular time and how that formula is applicable for that question. There are many hints given in the question itself, in the language of the question itself, so you must try to understand that. The last section, Algebra, is all about the understanding that you had, the learning that you have gone through in your 10th, 11th and 12th. Whatever theories, theorems, fundamentals you have learned about Algebra, now it's the time to apply them there may be some topics like permutation, combination and probability which are slightly difficult to understand, slightly difficult to apply to. So you should know the basics of them and if the question is very difficult, it is an advisable thing that you should leave that question straight away. Leaving the question is not a very bad strategy. Please understand, in any examination, very important thing is which question to be selected and which question is not supposed to be selected at all. When you are looking at the quantitative aptitude paper, it is very difficult to read all the 34 questions in one round because we don't know from which section which question has been kept. So what are we supposed to be doing in that one hour? How to utilize that one hour to the maximum level? Let us try to understand that. Now because I have written CAT uh, almost for a decade now. So I would like to share some of my point of views, how I have written CAD, how I used to go about CAD examination in the past few years. The very first thing, the very first thing what I had done 
I divided the content of aptitude paper in two rounds. Round number one is to identify all the easy question and out of 34, there will be 15 to 16 easy question that you can identify, keep them in round one, solve them and try to get the answer within 30 to 35 minutes. Even if you are taking 40 minutes, it's perfectly okay because you have already solved 16 question. That means you are very close to clear the cutoff or you might have already cleared the cutoff because of these questions. So do not worry about any other round. Your round number one is very, very important because you need to identify these 16 very easy questions and try to solve them in the given time. If the question paper is difficult, like CAT 2016, then you can pick only 11 to 12 question, keep them in round number one and solve them. Now, round number two is a very tricky round. First of all, how are we going to decide this is round number two? We have already gone through all the questions. We have already solved the easy questions. How to decide which question should go in round number two? What I have done in the past few years is, when I look at the question, I categorize it as, can I understand the question? Is it a familiar topic? Is this question too lengthy or too confusing? Is this question has troubled me in the past also? If I find any of these things, I straight away leave the question. But if I see that I had solved this question prior to this particular examination and it is going to take some time, then I use this during the examination and go ahead with the paper. Mark for review. It's ITH and you are giving an online examination. Why not to use the information technological tool given to us by the CAD examination in our benefit? We can easily click mark for review for a question so that later on, if we are having the time, we can come back to this question. Ideally, there will be seven to eight question in the entire paper that you will feel can be solved but will take some time which you can mark for review, come back later on and solve it once you are already done with round number one. If you are done with round number one within 35 even 40 minutes, you will still have 20 to 25 minutes left with you for round number three and if you are solving these seven to eight questions in the last moments, that will be it. That means you have done a wonderful job, you have already qualified the examination and you are aiming for a higher percentile in quantitative aptitude section. Round number three is an unsaid round for which you don't have to divide it in the norms of timing is to identify the questions which are extremely difficult and leave them straight away. So that will be it from our side. I hope you will utilize this strategy. All the best of you.